guys, Gunfather here. Welcome back to another episode of Firearms Friday. Today, for Firearms Friday, we're going to be discussing muzzle devices, specifically flash suppressors and muzzle brakes. Um, they're two totally different creatures. I've been asked numerous times what is the difference, so I figured I'd make a video to explain. Um, a flash suppressor, which is what comes on most modern sporting rifles nowadays, or AR-15, is a device used to help hide the flash, muzzle flash, when a bullet leaves the barrel of a gun. Um, you know, specifically used mostly in combat, because if you're shooting in low light or dark, you don't want your enemy to be able to see where you're shooting from, so you would put a flash suppressor on it so that it helps hide the muzzle flash. A muzzle brake is a device used to help channel those gases when a bullet leaves the barrel of a gun there are a ton of gases and pressure that follow that bullet out of the gun well those gases when you put a muzzle brake on are channeled in different directions um, up down left right um, however the muzzle brake is designed so that those gases instead of applying pressure back on the shooter are channeled in different directions so that you get less recoil and less muzzle rise um, we uh, wanted to demonstrate both these these and the difference between the two. Um, these muzzle brakes here actually came from a company, R&J Firearms, um, uh, Oregon Firearms Company, who uh, makes a great product, by the way. Uh, my wife actually won these in a photo contest of theirs, and uh, I really want to give them a shout out. So I will link them in the I will link their uh, business page and their YouTube channel in the description below. Um, they actually were, only, she only won one, they actually were nice enough to send two of them. So we have one, the, this is their crown style, which I have on my MSR, and we are building my wife's MSR currently, and she's going to use the keg style muzzle brake. Um, so, like I said, we wanted to demonstrate how these work. Now, uh, like I said, this controls muzzle rise and recoil. So when the bullet leaves the barrel of a gun, instead of those gas pressures being forced back on the shooter, they're forced to the side, which you'll be able to see in this clip, and be able to see how controllable the muzzle is when using a muzzle brake. So check this out. Crown style muzzle brake. See just how much bullet rise or how much muzzle rise we're actually getting here. Alright, now let's try a double tap. Alright. Alright, guys. I hope you all enjoyed that. As you can see, we only had about a half inch of muzzle rise, uh, even when doing double taps, which is very, very makes the gun very, very controllable. Much, much more controllable than when using a flash suppressor, which we will demonstrate now. All right, A2 style flash hider. Let's see uh, just how much uh, muzzle rise we get running the flash hider and no muzzle brake. All right, now a double tap. tell a huge difference. All right, guys. As you can see, when using the flash suppressor, we had almost an inch and a half to two inches of muzzle rise and, and a couple inches of recoil back at the same time, especially when doing double taps. Um, so, as you can see, the flash hider is not a device that is used to help you control recoil at all. Um, now, to demonstrate those double taps as well, I wanted to see and show you guys um, the difference between being able to control a double tap with a muzzle brake and also controlling a double tap with a flash hider. So check this out. Alright guys, we're 25 yards from our 12 inch square plate. We're running our crown style muzzle brake. We're going to see just how tight we can keep double taps with running a muzzle brake compared to an a, a standard A2 fly tire. Alright, that's pretty tight. Alright guys, well here's our double tap that we ran 25 yards running our crown style muzzle brake. 
on the DPMS Sporta Cal AR-15. As you can see, there's only, from 25 yards, and that is a double tap, there's only four inches between between the two shots. But the real the real impressive thing is is the muzzle rise. As I, this is actually my first shot, and the second one was actually lower. So I, instead of the muzzle rising, I, my muzzle actually went down with the uh, with the second shot. And there's only about right at one inch between both. I can get it lined up here. There's only about one inch between the uh, difference in the muzzle rise at 25 yards. Now with an A2 flash hire, that's a, that's a pretty hard feat to accomplish. But with this uh, awesome little crown style muzzle brake from R&J Firearms, that's, it absolutely controls the recoil and muzzle rise. And uh, you can tell just from them double taps. Let's try something else. All right, guys. As you can see. When shooting with the muzzle brake, it was very, very controllable. As a matter of fact, it was so controllable that I was actually able to put my second shot lower than my first shot, which just goes to show how much, how much, uh, how well the flash these muzzle brakes work. Um, when using the flash hider, you will not be able to control recoil as much and muzzle rise, and it's a lot harder to keep the second round of a double tap on target compared to a muzzle brake, which I'm about to demonstrate. Check this out. All right, we're 25 yards. We've got our standard A2 style flash hider. Our 12 inch piece of steel. We're gonna see how tight we can keep a double tap, not running a muzzle brake, and just the flash hider. Matter of fact, it could muzzle jumped enough that my second shot didn't even land on target. Well, Alright guys, as you can see from our double tap on our plate here, we were act I was actually only able to land one round on target from 25 yards away running the flash hider compared to the muzzle brake. The muzzle brake, we were actually able to land both rounds on target and actually instead of the muzzle rising, my hat was able to keep the muzzle down from the from running the muzzle brake, but running the flash hider, as you can see, I had enough muzzle rise that my second shot did not even land on target trying to run it just as fast as I ran it with the muzzle brake. So that is a big plus thumbs up for running a muzzle brake and reducing recoil and muzzle rise. All right, as you can see, guys, my second shot didn't even land on target. The first shot was right in the center, and the second shot did not even land on target. So. As you can see, I tried to do the double tap just as fast as I did it with the muzzle brake and didn't even come close to comparing in the amount of recoil and muzzle rise. Um, another thing that, uh, you know, one of the main reasons that people like using muzzle brakes, especially competition shooters and, and people like that, um, are the fact that when using a muzzle brake, you know, because your rec recoil is much more controlled, you are able to transition from target to target much faster than you would be able to if you had to reposition yourself from that muzzle rise. So check this out. Alright guys, here we go on our transition from target to target using our muzzle brake. able to transition really smoothly using the uh, R&J firearm muzzle brake. Alright guys, well as you can see, it was very, very controllable transition, transitioning from target to target, which would not even be possible to do it that fast when using just a standard A2 style flash hider. So, um, I hope you all have enjoyed this video. 
Um, if you guys like this stuff, remember we do this most every week. We have a Firearm Friday video. We do uh, Trick Shot Tuesday every Tuesday. So if you guys like this stuff, please be sure to rate, comment, subscribe, and share. Uh, do this, like I said, we do this every week. So if you like this, give me that thumbs up button. It really helps me out. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see plenty more. And I'll see you all next week. Gunfather out.